there. My name is Naraya Lith Johnson, and today I'm going to be talking about Jolly Jane, who is also known as the Angel of Mercy. Um, so within medical care, physicians take the code of conduct, which is the principles of clinical ethics, which states that non-maleficent is the obligation of a physician not to harm the patient. Yet, Panora Kelly, also known as Jane Toppen, or another alias, Jolly Jane, obtained the name Angel Mercy. Being 25 years old, she was employed as a nurse in Boston, Massachusetts, distributing toxic amounts of medicine and food, or lethal injections of morphine and atropine, defining Jane Thompson as an American serial killer. Okay, so just some background information about who Jolly Jane actually is. Um, so, Honora Kelly was born on March 31st, 1854. Quote, her mother died of tuberculosis when she was a year old, end quote, um, McBriar. Shortly after her father, Peter Kelly, who worked as a tailor, was said he went insane and was found in his shop with his eyelids sewn together, which inevitably led him to the asylum. Within 1863, Kelly's father took both herself and her sister, Dela to an orphanage known as the Boston Female Asylum. Within the orphanage, the staff kept detailed notes within the children's files. Jane was known to be a pathological liar who, quote, displayed the marks of a sociopath, end quote, by McBeer. Also, she was adopted by, quote, Miss Anne C. Thompson of Lowell, Mass, end quote, uh, to live her life as a servant for the family. She was given the surname Jane Toppin as they refer as they preferred a less Irish sounding name, especially during this time when there's mass discrimination against the Irish heritage. Alright, so just some history about Miss Jane. In 1887, when Jane was 33 years old, she began practice as a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. This is where she earned the nickname Jolly Jane, as she was charming and happy friendly with not only the patients but as the staff as well but Jane's dark intentions started to appear around this time. Um, Jane would misuse morphine and atropine as she was fascinated in experimenting on her patients as she would mix the chemicals to see the patient's reactions. Uh, Jane would spend her time forging fake documentation to justify her medical treatments. This led to the patients losing consciousness or paralyzation or zombie-induced state. Jane provided, quote, morphine to 31 hospital patients and was suspected of killing an additional 70 patients over the course of two-decade career, end quote, Radford University. Just something to think about. In 1889, Jane moved from Cambridge Hospital to the prestige Massachusetts General Hospital as she was recommended for the position. She continued to, to quote, claimed several more victims, end quote. She was shortly fired for not properly using, for properly, for not properly taking care of her patients. She returned back to Cambridge Hospital, who also fired her for op opioids recklessness. Jane established to become a private nurse during this time. This is where she started to have a poisoning spree with cycling i can't believe that's how you pronounce it um but to conclude jane would target elderly patients those who were known to have underlying health issues when the patient were to pass abruptly no one would fall suspicious to the situation since they already had medical conditions um, which was surrounding the death, which seemed like they passed as a natural cause. Uh, the spree comes to an end with the family members of the Davis um, having ordered an exhum on the Davis's youngest daughter, which was discovered that she had been poisoned. This led the officials to arresting Jane on October 29th of 1901 for murder. In the summer of 1902, Jane had confessed to the counts of 31 murders to her lawyer, which had as many as 100. 
as Jane could only remember 31 of her victims. The jury found Jane not guilty by reason of insanity. She served her life in sentence her life sentence at Tromont's Tront. Tronton. In the summer of 1902, Jane had confessed to 31 murders, 31 counts of murders to her lawyer, which could have been as many as 100, as Jane could only remember 31 of her victims. The jury found Jane not guilty by reason of insanity, which she served life sentence at, I'm going to say it's Tareton, I'm sorry, Tareton Insane Hospital, which she passed on August 19th. 1938 at the age of 81 and where she died of an ammonia jane would be considered the first female serial killer in american history so that's what i found i'm not entirely sure if she is the first american female serial killer or not <laughs>